Hi, Year 11. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at one of the more time consuming types of problems you'll see in this unit, and that is writing a full ionic equation from a full chemical equation. Uh, so the ones I'm looking at are on page 230 of your textbook. In particular, question 9G, I think, is a, uh, a particularly good one. It requires some tricky balancing. So let's get straight into it. So question 19 is write a full chemical equation and a full ionic equation for aluminium chloride plus potassium sulfide. Okay, so when those two mix, what is our chemical equation going to be? So our first step is to figure out exactly what our products are going to be. We've got our reactants. We know, you know, that's what we're starting with. What are we finishing with? Now, the easiest way to do this, or in fact, really the only way you need to do this, is to just swap over the positive ions. So instead of aluminium chloride, we get potassium chloride. And instead of potassium sulfide, we get aluminium sulfide. Okay, so we have our word equation. The next thing we need to do is write our chemical equation. And to do that, we need to make sure that our compounds are balanced. And I mean balanced electrically, so they have the same charges, so the charges are neutral. Now, in your textbooks on page 101, it gives you some common ions and their charges. If you can't remember them, that's what you should refer to. You should be able to tell them from a periodic table, but yeah, they're on page 101 as well. So first off, aluminium. The charge on aluminium is three plus. The chloride ion is one minus, or just minus. The potassium ion is plus and the sulfide ion is 2 minus. Okay, So we need to figure out what ratios these go together in. So if we have a look at aluminium chloride first of all, if we have th aluminium is 3 plus and chlorine is negative, we're going to need three negative charges to balance the positive 3 charge. So therefore, for each aluminium, oops, it's messy, for each aluminium we need Cl3. We need three chlorines bonded to each aluminium to balance the charge. And for potassium sulfide, the same thing. So we've got a negative two charge on the sulfide ion and a, plus, a positive one charge on the potassium. So we need two potassiums, two plus charges to balance the two minus charges. So we're going to have K2S. So there we have aluminium chloride and potassium sulfide and those are going to form potassium chloride. So if we have a look at potassium chloride, potassium is plus one, chlorine is negative one. So those are going to balance nicely already. My apologies for the handwriting. I don't know what is going on at the moment. Let's try again, K, C, L. Okay, so there is potassium chloride. Now aluminium sulfide, we have a plus three charge on aluminium and a two minus charge on sulfide. Now, three to two, that is a diff that's, well, that won't go as it is. What we can do is make both of them up to six, because three and two both go into six. So what we can do is have two aluminiums, Al2, and three sulfurs. Okay, so the two aluminiums will have a charge of plus six, the three sulfurs will have a charge of negative six. So there we go. That, at the moment, each of our individual molecules is, is electrically balanced. Now, what we need to do is make sure our equation is balanced. And straight away we can see that it's not. We have two potassiums on the left, we have one potassium on the right. We have two aluminiums on the right, we have one on the left. So this is going to take a little bit of balancing. So the first thing we should do, aluminium is two on the right, so let's put a two in front here, so we have two aluminiums on the left as well. Uh, now, we have two AlCl3. 
which means that we have six chlorines in total. Okay, because of this two here and this three here, we have two Cl3s, which means there are six chlorines on the left. Now on the right, we've only got one, so we need to put in a six here, so we've got six potassium chlorides. Okay, now if we have another look, we've got six potassiums on the right and only two on the left, so we'll need to put a three in there. So now we've got three K2s, which is six, and three sulfurs on the left, and we have three sulfurs on the right. So that is our full balanced equation. Let's write it out a little bit neater. So 2AlCl3 plus 3K2S becomes 6KCl plus Al2S3. Okay, there's our chemical equation. Now, we're going to need states as well. Now, the first two are easy. We know in the first two they are both aqueous because when we're mixing two solutions together, they both have to be aqueous, okay? They're both dissolved in water. Otherwise, you can tell from our solubility rules on page 199, if you were to look them up, you would see that the, anything with a chlor, well, most chlorines are soluble. Uh, aluminium is not an exception. And anything with potassium in it is soluble, okay? So we need to remember those as well. The ones that are always soluble contain sodium, ammonium, nitrate, or potassium. Okay? Those you need to remember. The rest of the solubility rules you can look up, but those ones you need to remember. Now let's have a look on the right. We need to figure out what's going to happen here. 6KCl, so our potassium chloride contains potassium. Now potassium is one of those ones that is always soluble. So that is going to be aqueous. Now the aluminium sulfide, on the other hand, is not. So the aluminium sulfide is actually going to be a solid. If you look up the, the rules on page 199, you'll see that most sulfides are insoluble. Okay? Again, that's not one of the ones you need to remember. You can assume, you know, if you, if you don't have the book with you, assume that if it has one of the uh, sodium, nitrate, ammonium, or potassium, if it has any of those, it's soluble. Otherwise, it's not. Okay? So there is our full equation with states. Okay, looks good. So that's the first part done. There's our first chemical equation. Now we need to do the ionic equation. And this is based on the idea that any time uh, a salt, so a metal and a non-metal, a compound, any time a salt is dissolved in water, it dissociates into its ions. So the ions actually separate and just swirl around in the water. So everything in here that is aqueous, we could write in a better way in its ions, okay? So 2AlCl3 is two aluminium ions and six chlorine ions, okay? So we have two Al, now remember Al is three plus, and we know that's aqueous, plus six Cl minus, okay, because we have two Cl3s. That means there's six chlorine ions, and that is aqueous as well. Plus, we have six potassiums. Three K2s is six. So we have six K plus, which is aqueous, plus three sulfurs, which is two negative. Okay, and again, that is aqueous. All right, now on the right-hand side of our equation, we've got 6KCl. Now that is also a salt, and it's aqueous. So again, that'll dissociate when it hits the water. So we will have six potassiums, so they will separate from the chlorines, plus six Cl's. And the last bit, our aluminium sulfide, is not aqueous. It's a solid, which means it does not dissociate in water. It stays as aluminium sulfide. So we don't separate this. We leave it as aluminium sulfide. Okay, It's a solid, so it stays as it is. So there is our extended ionic equation. Now, as you might remember, the way to get this into a proper ionic equation is to cancel out our spectator ions. That is, get rid of anything that's the same on the left and the right. 
Okay, anything that doesn't change state, if it looks exactly the same on the left and the right of the equation, we get rid of it. So first of all, have a look at the potassiums. Okay, we have 6K plus, oops, 6K plus aqueous here and 6K plus aqueous here. They're exactly the same. It hasn't changed at all, so it's a spectator ion and we don't have to worry about it. The other one is the 6Cl minus. It's aqueous there and it's aqueous here as well. Those are spectator ions and we don't have to worry about them. So now we rewrite this equation but without our spectator ions and we get 2Al3 plus aqueous plus 3S2 minus aqueous becomes Al2S3 solid. And that is our full ionic equation. Now these do take a little bit of time. Okay, this video has gone for 11 minutes so far, so it's, you know, it's quite long. It's a drawn out process, but you do get faster at them the more you practice. All of these steps are important. Okay, there's, you, need to be able to, to, you need to be able to do them all. Uh, don't stress about taking shortcuts at this point because you do need to be able to write the full chemical equation and the full ionic equation. So here is our full chemical equation, that bit's done, and here is our full ionic equation. Okay, hope that makes sense.